All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm just getting things situated. There we go. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We are a webinar. Um, uh, we are an online show broadcast on the internet. Um, we are we broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, but if you're unable to join us, you can always go to our website and watch our recordings. And I'll show you where that is at the end of today's show. We can get to all of our archives. All of our shows are recorded and posted to the Library Commission's YouTube account. If there are any presentations um, or documentate documents or handouts or anything included, that's also posted as well. And links to any websites may of interest that may be mentioned during the show. We we'll link out to those too into our archives. Um, we have our archives going back all the way to the beginning of Encompass Live. Encompass Live started in January 2009. So there's a lot out there. Um, and yes, there's a lot of things that may be outdated. But we are librarians, so we save everything, <laughs> um, and we keep it for archival purposes. Uh, so do keep that in mind when you are looking at any of our, watching any of our archives, that some of the um, resources or information may be old, uh, links may be broken, whatever. Um, but everything has a date on it, so you know exactly when it was originally broadcast, so you can tell what's new, what's old, what you might want to look for something um, more recent. Um, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live. Um, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of any services or products or resources that might be um, interesting. Um, our only criteria is that it is related to li <coughs> libraries. Something that libraries are doing, something that we think they could be doing, um, something new or different that they might want to get involved in or interested in, um, and all types of libraries. The Nebraska Library Commission, we serve all libraries in the state, so public, academic, school, uh, Special, special libraries, museums, um, correctional facilities. We have a, a group of correctional librarians here in Nebraska, actually. Um, early criteria is it's something to do with any kind of libraries. Uh, some of our topics you may look at and wonder about the title, like, why is that on the show? But trust me, I always make sure things come back to its libraries somehow, because <laughs> that's the whole point of all of this. <laughs> um, both our uh, live show and our recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do, if you have any colleagues, um, friends, neighbors, family, anybody who might be interested in, um, you think might be interested in any of our topics, uh, send them to our website, um, tell them to sign up for our um, show, or um, have them watch any of recordings that are out there. We do um, sometimes bring in guest speakers to Encompass Live, but we also have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do um, sessions on things that we're doing at the commission, and that's what we have this morning. Um, to my left here is Alex Snyder, who is our coordinator of children and young adult library services. I almost well, it done. Well, it's written down right here. Oh, <laughs> I cheat. Because <laughs> it's a long title. Um, this is basically our kids in the YA person here at the Library Commission. And over on her side is Amy Owen, who is one of our information services librarians from here in our reference department. Um, and today they're going to be talking about, and you can actually see it just at the very bottom of the page, our blog post about it. <laughs> That's just a promotion for this week's show. Uh, one book for Nebraska kids and one book for Nebraska teens, 2017. Um, there are, you've heard of these one book programs out there. We have a little different twist on that. So I'm going to just hand over to you, Sally, to tell us about it, where it came from, where it came from, what's going on this year. Thank you so much. Well, I know we did this program a year ago. Mm -hmm. We had yes. different titles. It is an annual program. program that we have. And um, so I first thing I'm going to do is show you how to find one book for Nebraska. If I'm going to put this under here, I didn't even think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Look, there if you look at your children in YA carefully, because I always lose it over here, it's at the top. It's at the top. To relax. Oh, way there back, we go. Way back and look, yeah. There it is right there. So you can click on that, or if you can't remember just exactly where to look, you, you know, can do what I always do, which is in the search bar box. And if you just type one book, lots of things come up, but you can just come down here and click on one book for Nebraska kids and one book for Nebraska teens will take you to the same page. One book for Nebraska kids and teens. Um, Oops, here we go. Now, I know that we have the adult program, which is called One Book, One Nebraska, and lots of cities have like One Book, One Lincoln, One Book, One Omaha. Mm -hmm. But 
I came up with this title because I thought this made perfect sense. One book for Nebraska kids, one book for Nebraska teens. And I'm the only one that can just let it roll from my tongue. So apparently it's my brain that thinks this is great and everybody else stumbles with it, but I don't know what to change it to. So. What that's what it is. Yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, that's what I get. So this is the main page about the one book for Nebraska kids and teens, and um, we have some connections here. The commission, the library commission, has a one set of books for each of the books selected since we began this program, and the library systems have some of them because our funding was uh, cut a while back, and we don't. We don't buy as many copies. These but, are our book club kits that you can yes. um, check out from the library commission. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to explore that a little yeah. bit too. But I wanted to start with the fact that last year we talked about Encompass, on Encompass Live about one book for Nebraska kids. And I, and I jotted down what was the date of that presentation so I could take it right to it. But look here, we are so prepared. <laughs> that Janet is terrific. She put it right here. And my favorite thing about this is I do a lot of talking about how this all started, which I'll do a shorter version of today because mm -hmm. if you want every detail I could ever think of, you can look at that one. Sure, the entire history of the book. Yes. <laughs> but um, Tom Watson came in at almost an hour in because he had was excited that his book Stick Dog was the one book for Nebraska kids. So if you just click here where it says recorded online session, there you are and do recording. I'm just going to click on this for a little bit, so you don't. And then, if if you are waiting, wanting to see Tom Watson, you can just drag this. Don't get sick. <laughs> Look away if you need to. But just about there, oh, is. there he is. So just about here, and then once, and then there he is. He takes about half an hour. <laughs> he lied. <laughs> Showing us how to draw the dog takes five minutes, but he was wonderful. And you can show, I should stop. You can show this to kids in your library and they will learn how to draw a stick dog and his friends. And it's just so fun. Whether you're using the book for your book club kid or not, he shows you each square or rectangle step by step. And it's, we were drawing them here and it went great. It was so fun. And I just want to encourage everyone to take a look at this and, and show it to the kids in your community. This is Tom Watson, the author, showing you how to draw the dogs. I just think that's true. And yeah, you were talking about this with your son. Yes, I took my drawings home and he thought they were great. He thought I did it myself. But, <laughs> uh, and then later when he read the book, he recognized that drawing. And, oh, that he knew that dog, so he's very excited. <laughs> that is great. So if I click here, I bet you will go back. Back again. So just remember that that the quick way to get to that session is just mm -hmm. to go to the one book for Nebraska kids and teens page. So that was last year's one of last year's books. That was last yeah. year's yes, one of them. Yeah. Um, a little bit of a brief history. Um, this all started because Sharon Osanga, who is one of the co, <coughs> she's co-director. Director. Director. Of the central yeah, rid of that word. Yeah. <laughs> and that's true, they did change. Co director. And of the I know program. she's preparing to retire, but when I first took over this position from Mary Jackson, um, Pam Scott and I went out to talk with Sharon about a lot of ideas. And this was one of Sharon's ideas was, you know, we have the one book one to rest, let's do something for kids. And so um, she had the suggestion for the first title and we said, Yeah, let's do this. And we kind of figured out at that meeting, how it might work, and then it's kind of evolved from there. Mm -hmm. And if you hold on to your your hats, we're going to scroll way down, so don't get sick. Way down. And the first one was 2007. At that time, we said it was a two-year um, stint for One Book for Nebraska Kids, and it was Rescue Josh McGuire by Ben Michelson. And um, our thing, our focus has been the kids' book is for like upper elementary to early middle school age, up roughly in there. We know that kids read at many different levels in a, in a particular age group or uh, grade. So it depends on your group that's coming who you want to, 
to do the one book for Nebraska kids or the one book for Nebraska teens. And this is still up there because once a book has been selected, it does not expire. This is still one book for Nebraska kids, 2007, 2008. And you can even talk with the kids if you decided to use this book and say, why do you think they chose this one in 2007 for them? And talk about what is it about the book that makes it something that would be good to read and discuss if you want to. So and all of those games and things are still kept up to date too, well, they, interactive. They were um, created for in that year and they're still there for you to use. Even if you, the kids don't um, read the book all together, but you want to have a puzzle for kids to do, have you ever read this book? Here's a puzzle. You can just set it up there if you want to. <clears throat> At this point in time, we just chose one book a year. So that's why it's 2007, 2008, because in 2008, we chose the one book for Nebraska teens. And that was The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Um, and at that point, we were choosing the teen book for high school level. And we do kind of still try to do that, but we don't always get it that close to high school because something can be really terrific. And it will be for middle school and early high school. But still, high school kids can read it. Even though the character in this book is age 10 at the beginning, it is about people who, German people living in Germany and what is happening during the war to, to, the, to the average German who is not a soldier or, um, or rounding up people. It's just an average person. So that's why it was for older kids. Mm -hmm. Again, we have puzzles and there's also discussion questions. At this point, we didn't have activities. I think I added activities because that's something that the Golden Solar does. And activities are kind of a little different, but we'll look at those in a little bit. I didn't mean to say anybody can jump in at any time with comments or suggestions, or people can type in questions. And um, At this point in time, I had a youth advisory board, which was made up of uh, public and school librarians who worked with kids and teens. And they um, read the books that were suggested and voted on the ones that they thought should be chosen. Um, that group has fallen away because I don't have enough stuff for them to do. Can you believe that? <laughs> and so right now, I have a group of library commission staff people who read children's books and teen books, and also a librarian out there in the field who might even be uh, logged in today. She's Deb Covey from Mayfield. Thank you, Deb. Hi, Deb. She's on the committee also. And um, if you are interested in helping with this, just let me know. I don't want to have too many people because then it gets bogged down again. But I don't want to discourage anyone who might be interested. Now we'll move up a little bit and see here it says activities. The Green Glass Sea by Ellen Clagers. We were lucky enough to have her come to the state. She offered. I mean, when you're sitting in your office and you get an email from someone says, hey, you want me to come visit your state? And do you say no? <laughs> uh, that's just crazy. She was terrific. And so we do have, we try to have like author information. So that takes us to um, what we know about her. Often it takes us to the author's web page, but um, there's that a link time, within that too. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Thank you. That's, that's what happens when you read things. <laughs> Her website's there, but our sub page that we link to, she's moved things around. Obviously, she's probably updated it since 2009. It's quite yeah. <laughs> so that's another thing that when you when you add these, you have to go back and check these sometimes. Mm -hmm. But under you know we have um, discussion questions and recommended web pages that relate to this, the things that were happening in this book, and also some puzzles again. But under activities are things that are a little bit longer things that kids might want to do that relate to the book. We, we pulled out some of the phrases that came, that were in that, used in that book at the time. And, um, kids don't, don't know those anymore. Why did they say loose, leaves, loose lips sink ships? Mm -hmm. They never had heard that. So. Or they may have heard it and don't know where it comes from because yeah. it's it originated so long ago during the time that they weren't you know paying attention to things or yeah we're not working live <laughs> like so, I know some of those I don't know knew her onions yeah I don't know what that one is at all <laughs> I can't remember now and wasn't the fat lady yeah right now yeah, in the book it says fat man but yeah mm -hmm. so we just never know 
what you're going to encounter. And there you see all the towns that she visited when she awesome. did the best for this woman. And again, teens, whoops, sorry. Again, we're doing the two year thing. So this is our alternating between a book for kids and a book for teens. So one each year two. it would be alternating. Yeah. And we were also fortunate that Neil Schusterman visited Nebraska and talked to a lot of kids in schools and public libraries. He also was wonderful. And he was working on some things while I was, I got to drive him part of the time and system administrators drove him part of the time. And he was on his laptop just typing away. <laughs> and he didn't tell until the end that he, he works better if there's lots of noise and distraction. I was trying to be really quiet. <laughs> I didn't run the, play the radio so I wouldn't disturb him and I had done the wrong thing. But I should have told him sooner. Anyway, we have several of his books in the book club. Okay, oh, collection. Other titles. Yeah. 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 I read this one online, the mm -hmm. sequel, and I, I really liked it. Yeah. yeah. And let's see. Okay, the last newspaper boy in America is the one book for Nebraska kids. And this is the last two year book because in 2003, 13, I mean, uh, I just went way back too far. <laughs> then we decided, oh, I forgot, make confession. What's the 12th? See how it just has one date now. Mm -hmm. And then in 13, people had been asking me, we really need to have both of these every year. And so I said, okay, that's a good thing to do. And Aliens on Vacation was the one for kids. This happens to be my one of my favorite. I like, I love all the books. <laughs> I haven't, we haven't picked one yet that I thought was terrible. But I just want, this one was just funny. And I, and I love the situation that the boy is in. He, his grandmother, mother is considered a crazy lady in their town, small town. Because actually, she's a vacation location for aliens and she has to help them get disguise so they look like humans and uh, so with her grandson there he has to keep the sheriff out of the way so he doesn't find out what's really going on. Mm -hmm. And the Leviathan is one of those um, steampunk oh, okay. alternate, yeah. well, alternate yeah. straight yeah. Right. So that's that's a lot of fun. And that's a trilogy that's the first book in a trilogy and I finally got all through and oh, here's where we have Long Boy and Miss Peregrine. Here's where I fell down. <laughs> you can see that there are placeholders for some puzzles and things, and author information that just never happened yet. I still have high hopes that I'm going to get these done because I live <laughs> in a fantasy world. Let me say this. Um, and so don't give up, but still do these books. And we do have the discussion questions and the activities, and if you mm -hmm. and we have the crossword puzzles for the kids' books, so um, we'll try to get some other puzzles up there. We did go on hiatus for one year because obviously I was falling behind every year. And then this last batch got yeah, right back on the course there. Yeah. Stick dog and the girl who was supposed to die. I believe this is where some people stepped in to help me. Is that correct? I'm not sure. I was uh, last year. Okay. Well, it might have been this year that yeah. you did some fun. And I want to get the, the book covers on the rest of the page too, because mm -hmm. I think that, like you said, book covers really do help draw people to it. So, Stick Dog and the Girl Who Was Supposed to Die were our choices for last year. And this year, now we come up here to Alcatraz versus the Evil Librarians for the kids and The Legend of Bass Reeves for the teens. I read Alcatraz versus the Evil Librarians when it first came out because any book that says they have evil librarians in it, I wanted to know more about it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's our local Brandon Center in Nebraska. Can't go wrong again. <laughs> and that's one reason it was chosen this year because of the Nebraska 150. We thought we should pick a, a local author. And Bass Reeves is by a well known children and teen author about a not well known at all black man who was a marshal for many years and rounded up lots of dastardly people. It's called The Legend of Bass Reeves. And I just wanted to mention a couple of things. This is a fictional account because there just isn't that much information on Mr. Reeves. So he was a real person. He was a yeah, real person. But this, yeah. He was very well respected. Mm -hmm. 
everything he did. He arrested his own son because his son broke the law. He said that was the hardest thing he ever had to do, but he did it because he had to. And he was born a slave and he ran away and ended up living with the Creeks, I believe it is, for a while. Oh, we do have descriptions of a book mm -hmm. that yeah, give you a little bit of information. But um, one of the things I just want to mention, um, the author does say that this he had to fictionalize this book because we don't know what he said to people. We don't know how he went from this place to that place, but probably it was through there, those kinds of things. So this is fictional. And at the back of the book, under his um, epilogue, he says, and I'm quoting here from the book, each year thousands of tourists and curiosity seekers go to the grave of Billy the Kid in Fort Sumter, New Mexico. The same thing happens in Deadwood, South Dakota, when Wild Bill Pickock is buried. Mourners and tourists flock to Lookout Mountain above Golden, Colorado, to the grave of William F. Cody, and thousands visit the grave of Kit Carson in Taos, New Mexico, and other places. There is nothing for Bass Reeves. He lies in an unknown place in an unmarked grave, ignored by dime novelists in his lifetime and by Hollywood after his death. There are no monuments to him, no flocks of weeping tourists, no epic films or drums or music, no last words. He was there, and then he was gone. But perhaps there is a suitable epitaph for him, someone who did know him. Chief Marshal Leo Bennett said about him, he never shirked his duty. And I thought, wow, that's pretty amazing that he wrote a book, a fictional book about this guy who really lived and really did the things that, and he based it mostly on newspaper articles and things like that to find out who he went after and who he brought in and things like that. But it's very readable and, yeah. um, of course, Gary Paulson has to be readable. I think I've wandered well away from my list of things <laughs> no, I was going to okay. talk about. But, um, so I'm going to go back up Do to you. Do you want to talk about um, evil librarians? Oh, we could. <laughs> this is also the beginning of a series, too. Yes, and I've only read the first one. I think I'm going to have to finish this series someday. The boy's name is Alcatraz Smedry, and it's his 13th birthday. And like it says, he burns out his foster mother's kitchen, and then he gets a bag of small bag of sand as his birthday present. Who wants that? <laughs> and a strange old man who claims to be his grandfather. And all of a sudden, bizarre, strange things are happening. And I love um, how um, I can't remember who wrote this for him. That was you. That was you. <laughs> I love how it says. His tendency to be clumsy and break things or set them on fire is actually a superpower. <laughs> I am clumsy. I didn't know. You it was a didn't superpower. know. I, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I'm always late and that is a superpower in this book. Oh, so there is it? Oh, yeah. see? Oh, I see. need to get yeah, like that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the librarians are evil in this book. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there's dinosaurs too. Is this the one that was the dinosaur? Yeah. 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 So, well, I'm going to go back up and then we'll come back to this and to the, to the puzzles. But I just wanted to remember to tell you about, wow, guidelines. How does a book get to be a one book for the best of kids? You're going to laugh when you see the guidelines because they're not very <laughs> specific. Pretty broad. <laughs> you don't want it to be a Golden Sower nominee because lots of kids are reading those anyway to vote for the Golden Sower. Except for the teen choices in parentheses, because so far so good on that. We're trying to get more teens to read mm -hmm. the Golden Sower. So if this ends up being a one book for Nebraska teens, that would be just. Mm -hmm. We want it to be available in paperback so it's more affordable for us mm -hmm. and for other people to buy some. So you won't find any just published books that are still in hardcover. No. Yeah. Though there are some wonderful ones. We just they'll be in the future. They will be. They could they be a potential they'd be um, possibilities for a future year. Yeah, exactly. If this is a suggested age group, though, like we said earlier, age groups are broad, fairly broad, but um, and it has to have some good discussion points because I remember a book club for adults that I attended where all of us loved the book and nobody had a thing to say about it. <laughs> we sat there for 15 minutes saying, yeah, I really liked it. I really liked the part where somebody, oh yeah, that was great. And we're like, 
There is nothing to discuss. It is just a book. really entertaining we read. Just love it. I which is perfectly it. fine, but <laughs> so you do not all books work for a book club if you're trying mm -hmm. to yeah. discuss things and delve deeper and you know, yeah. And you're just and you're saying, well, that was a good one. Let's pick something different for this. <laughs> so and then now when you get here, you can return. So if anyone does have any ideas for future titles, that they can send you exactly. suggestions, and that's all, all the criteria you have to meet. Well, contact Sally Snyder. <laughs> you can just contact me right here and say, hey, um, the kids in my community love give me the title, and if it's not in paperback yet, I'll put it on my list and hang on to it. And every year I'll check to see if it's come out in paperback. So that's fun. I also just want to mention here, um, we have the book, the book sets, and you can just click here to get to our book club kit form. So you can search for things. What what do we have in our book club kits? And I should just take. Let's just do. Let's see. Make sure it's E N. We all know it's E N. Last name. Oh, thank you. Last name. And then down a little bit through search. Okay, so yes, we have other books like Gary Paulson. Mm -hmm. But when we find Bass Reeves, then it says here, I thought it said, oh, there, one book for the Bass mm -hmm. right here. Selection. So I was told that both sets are out right now Gary Paulson's book and um, Brandon Sanderson's, which is exciting. but. Remember that these are here, they're available. Lawn Boy was a one book There's for the rest. Yeah. And, and we have audio copies of both books too. Oh, that's nice. nice yeah. Audio copies are helpful. So that's a way to, to find out more of what we have. I'm trying to be convenient here so it's all located on this page. So we don't even explain that we chose one book and two. Now we'll get down to some of the puzzles just to give you a sense of what kinds of puzzles we have. Is there anything? I'm going to turn it over to um, Amy for a little bit because she really did a lot of work on the puzzles for me this year because I was so far behind and I'm guilty and I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it was a lot of fun. I was, I was glad to do it. Um, I just basically recreated the same types of puzzles that you had done in previous years and I used freely available puzzle generators mm -hmm. that were approved for educational use. So, um, I think these puzzles would be a lot of fun to do a tile puzzle if either after you've read the book or even before to kind of give you a clue of what the book is going to be about. This is a scrambled quotation and just rearrange the the tiles to get the quote, oh. and you can do either four letters or three letters, which are a little more difficult. So I don't know if you, we also have the answers here, but I won't show you those. <laughs> <because that's true. laughs> um, yeah, I think that if you wanted to do these before you read the book, that might build some anticipation about what the story would be about. Like if I saw the word dinosaur in this book about magic, mm -hmm. I would want to know what's going on here. It's a, why is there a dinosaur? Yeah, because that was the, all those words have something to do with that title. So yeah. If I'm, yeah. I mean, a dinosaur, so I might, it would never, you would never have thought of picking up a book about librarians, possibly, yes. and that it would have dinosaurs in it or other things, yeah. Some of these, you might want to have read them a little more to, mm -hmm. to be able to answer the questions. But. It's really pretty simple. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun, and you can do fun activity either before or after. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there were I added some websites for Alcatraz, but there really wasn't a lot out there about Bass Reeves, so I haven't mm -hmm. added those yet. Um, I was looking for some titles, related titles, but there's just, there's not I think there's, a story, but like, like you said, yeah. there's not a lot about them. There are a few, but I haven't had a chance to look at them yet, so I didn't feel comfortable recommending them just yet until yeah. I have seen them, but there are a few. So, and there, I would assume, based more on 
actual history what they could find <laughs> right, rather right. than a fictionalized story. So they might not be geared towards the same age group, but mm -hmm. if you're looking for more, more information. Sometimes some of these books, and I know sometimes when Sal, you've been on, on Encompass Life and done your best books for kids and teens yeah. sessions, um, the ones that are nonfiction or even fictionalized nonfiction like this one, um, sometimes the books themselves have more resources in the back or something mm -hmm. saying, this was my fictionalized story, but if you, want to, if you do want to read more about the real person, go here. Yeah. So that could be something that we can use. But like you said, this, fortunately this one guy is really hard to find anything about, but yeah. maybe we'll dig up some things that will be um, useful. Um, and I'll also point out, I mentioned the audio copy of each book. We use the CD version for our book based Friday. Yeah. Earlier this summer for <laughs> Apple Traz. Yeah. So that's in our talking book and yes. Braille service uh, <laughs> uh, part of the library commission. And, they, and the both books are available through talking books, I believe. Mm -hmm. Fast reads, but Apple Traz is for sure. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things I wanted just to point out here is at the top under author information, we go to Brandon Sanderson's general web page, mm -hmm. which is great if you want to read more of his more of other his. things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what I also like is down here, Alcatraz versus the Evil Librarian's Home. This is still his web page, but it's this particular part of it about mm -hmm. Alcatraz and the librarians. So you can just go right here and you don't want to have to hunt through this page. So you can Fine. see what the series of the other titles are. Mm -hmm. How many does it say here? How many more? How many is written by this? Five? Oh, that's right. Uh, he tends to write five books, although only four with permission by seven. Okay, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so there's in four of them. Okay, so I can get the omnibus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Brandon Sanderson has quite an online presence. He's all over social media, mm -hmm. but I didn't find you know as much about Gary Paulson. No, so he doesn't even have his own website. No, his is a link just to the um, Random House's page exactly. about him as an author. Yeah, mm -hmm. it has a nice picture of him. It does. Because yes. mm -hmm. wouldn't you have your favorite picture? He does it. Yeah, he's got a nice one. He's pretty happy there. Well, well, I could. If you wanted to know more yeah, about what's going on from them, you could sign up. <laughs> so let's do it. Now, I jumped in at the wrong time and said something about my favorite, one of my favorite books that have been chosen for one book for Nebraska Kids and Teens was. Aliens on vacation, but uh, I was going to ask Amy what her favorite is, if there is a favorite. Well, I think my favorite that's been chosen so far was Unwind by Neil Schusterman, and Chris mm -hmm. mentioned that one yeah. as well. I read it during library school for a class. Oh, wow. Um, so I'm just horrified of the idea of a world where parents could have their children unwound, mm -hmm. their bodies harvested for parts, and they're unhappy with them. So, mm -hmm. But now that I have children, I kind of understand that. <laughs> <laughs> a little more. So it's probably a good idea that it's kind of Yes. I, I saw it because here at the Library Commission, Sally, and she just mentioned this in other sessions, gets a lot of books that are sent to her to review um, and then to, to, to use, you know, to promote for this or for books for kids and teens, um, which are then um, distributed out to our library systems to then give to libraries for free. And it was on the table or on the shelf back there sometime as I was walking by. There's this area in the Library Commission, which is awesome. Is between where I fix my office is and the bathroom, which is good or bad depending on your point of view. So I end up browsing the shelves. It's all these children's and teen books, and I saw it there, and I've actually got a few titles from there, and I just picked it up because it was just sounded so interesting. And yeah, and then I bought it for myself actually <laughs> as as when I was having read it. Yeah, and the you know, like Ranzo, that is one that's on my um to read list is all that because like you said, librarians, anything that's about us, which I wish would be a happier one, but <laughs> um, well, we are there's all kinds in this whole thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many of them in the series we read? Just the first one? Just the first one. Because okay. I wonder, and somebody else out there may know it and I don't want to give it away. I wonder, because in many situations like that, there's always the, um, the rebels. So, 
the, the non-evil librarians that fight in the against the evil potentially. I don't know. Yeah. So get a yeah, hint so about that. that. Yeah. At the, end of the first one. Yeah. Um, it just it could happen. <laughs> so as um, I think Krista said, if there's a title that you think would be good for us to consider for one book for Nebraska kids or teens, please just send it to me. If you used, if you have looked at these puzzles, you don't have to use them. And you think, gosh, this tile puzzle's fun, the letter drop puzzle's fun, but why don't you guys do a something I haven't heard of before puzzle? Because mm -hmm. I ran across the letter drop puzzle somewhere and thought, oh, this is fun. Mm -hmm. Just suggest it. And you can even make up a puzzle for that book mm -hmm. if you want to, and then we'll put it up here. We'll test it first to make sure it actually works. Because we, want to, we will test it. But yeah, we'll put it up. Um, can we look at some of the discussion questions? I just want to see what kind of uh, well, and these. And now, where did you get these? The discussion questions from? Do we come up with these? Or yes, so I know sometimes with some books, some um, publishers do put together uh, already things yeah. ahead of time for if you want to use this in a book club or for something. So I'm just jumping down to Stick Dog because of that. It says with websites, mm -hmm. and this website does have discussion questions uh, on yes, Stick Dog where okay. we found it, and we just. Put it over here. Mm -hmm. So, and so there are always things that refer to the book, and then sometimes there's some general questions like, "What did you think of the cover? Did it lure you in?" Mm -hmm. So that's why I went there. And we'll go back up to these discussion questions, and sometimes they're more of a, "Why do you think mm -hmm. someone would write this book or series about Alcatraz and mm -hmm. Smedry?" Why can't I say Smedley? <laughs> it's a weird name. It is. <laughs> so, what makes a librarian so evil? Really, I just don't know any librarians who are evil. <laughs> I know I some here, although. Yeah. <laughs> when I was younger, I might have thought there were a few evil ones, but you know, at this point, no. And so, some of these are more of a of a question answer, and some of them are more of a discussion. Mm -hmm. What is an occupation? I'm glad they put page numbers there so people can find yeah. it. Yeah, nice reference. Yeah, I think that's what he has on in the one picture. Oh, on the cover. There are different. Or there are different covers, yeah. different covers of the paperback books. Yes, it's got yeah. three different covers. So. Yeah. so that's kind of fun. And you're welcome. Anybody's welcome to use these for school or library programs. Um, I don't think we did activities for this, so I'm going to just scroll down a little bit. It's okay. I think I said I was going to make the activities, and then I just didn't. This is one of my favorite activities because I have a character chart that you can go to, and then you, you put in the characters of the different dogs in the book, and then maybe you can create a, a different dog that you think might be fun to add to the to the group. So it's things like this that are kind of an extension of the story and it's not anything that's right or wrong, but something that kids can do if they want to mm -hmm. that we were looking for in the activity. So I think I dropped the ball. So it's gonna, it's gonna vary from book to book and what kind of information in there to get yeah, which makes sense. Yeah. Um, so does anybody have any questions about um, any of the titles um, or about running a book Group, um, how to get you know with teens with kids? How do you do this? Um, any um, any questions or any tips tricks? We do have one question that's come in. Oh, um, it's kind of two questions in one, but I, both important. Um, how do you get fourth to sixth graders interested in a book club? Because that must be a hard age potentially. And sometimes we have girls, but seldom any boys. Oh, those are, that's a good question. And that is an ongoing, well, that is a, that's a common thing, is that boys are harder to get involved in, in reading and whatnot. And it's interesting to ask about fourth and sixth graders, because teens are the ones that you hear about more also falling away from using the library. So, because they have so many activities, they really oh, do. Yeah. So what about boys? Well, I was going to answer the first question. Okay, okay. sure. Sorry. <laughs> Getting them interested in, in a book discussion group, I would say something to do is you, generally you know the kids who love to read because they're in your life, so you've got to know them. And I would say talk with a few of them and say, 
I'm thinking about this. Would you be interested? How do you think it ought to work? Find a, a core group of four or five kids who love to read, love to read all kinds of things, hopefully, and that would be interested in having a discussion. And if you want to, you could start it with them just talking about books that they've enjoyed. And then you can move it into, okay, here are some titles of books that we could get several copies so we could all read the same book, which would you want? If you let them choose the book, yeah. that helps. So, but you can control it by saying, here are five books, which would we want to read? I know a lot of libraries have had great success with having a, their own um, teen advisory board, which is actually yes. made up of the teens themselves, not the adults telling them what they should be reading or what they'd like them to read, but asking them, get them in, getting them involved in the decision process. Yeah. And that's, that's also a good suggestion for getting teens involved, because they'll know who else at, at school likes to do this, and you could, they could invite them to join. The other part about the boys is um, you have to figure out, talk, if you have some boys who come in your library, talk with them about what is it they're, they're enjoying reading. Often, boys read more nonfiction than girls. This is all very general, so please, I read nonfiction all the time when I was a kid. So, and I'm a little still. <laughs> um, but uh, find out what it is they like to read. I'm thinking graphic novels are very popular with boys mm -hmm. and girls, so you might want to mm -hmm. choose a few graphic novels. Some of the newer ones are really terrific. Um, just finished one called Brave by Svetlana Chomkova. <laughs> Ooh, that was funny. <laughs> about a, a kid in middle school who just really isn't sure if he's being bullied or not and if his friends are his friends or not mm -hmm. and he's overweight and he has great ideas he wants to save the world but um yes he has to master math first <laughs> um, and it was terrific and it, and it hits on things that would be good discussion points mm -hmm. and so if sure. you find some things like that, mm -hmm. that can bring in both boys and girls sure. potentially. But there's not no oh food. Oh, oh, that's that's that. <laughs> that can be messy. That can you also have to think about allergies and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Popcorn is a favorite because it's inexpensive. Messy as all get out, but you know get the vacuum out after they're done. So offer refreshments whenever you're you have yeah. an event or something. Yeah, have some popcorn or chips or something. That's not too pricey, but that gives them something to munch on if it's after school in particular. They love to munch after school. How about you, Amy? Well, I felt like both books that were chosen this year would appeal to both boys and girls, especially mm -hmm. so much action involving both of them. Of course, the dinosaurs. So <laughs> you mentioned the dinosaurs. Um, and there's been a lot of comparisons to Harry Potter uh, with mm -hmm. the Alcatraz book. I can see that, yeah. Um, a young magician. Mm -hmm. So, and even last year with the girl who was supposed to die, it's it's a it got a female lead, but you know there's a lot of action there, and then there's a, her male co-star, if you will. Um, so yeah, I, I just think that the books that were chosen are, are appealing across both genders. Mm -hmm. Well, that is something. It isn't all part of our guidelines, but it is something we try to do. Yeah. Choose something is that it's not too much for one gender or the other. Mm -hmm. it's all something different. that anybody could enjoy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. enjoy. Mm -hmm. I like too that you have the, the descriptions, and I know I think you said Amy that you wrote one of the ones for the ones for this year. Yeah. yeah. Um, to help people figure out, you know, like, do you like abduction, escape, and paranoia? It's the speedy, suspenseful mystery. Awesome. And that first, you know, line is already people know, is this for me or is it not? Or is it something? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I think that really helps a lot with some, trying to get some of the kids who you might not know what they're into mm -hmm. put together this little write up here that can help you. And um, a lot of the time we end up with, well, actually, Every book's a potential first book for a new series anymore. <laughs> yeah. But we also, you know, like Stick Dog is the first book in a, I think there's eight maybe it's, out there. It's bring them out now. Yeah. now. It's and got Stick Cat, as it says there. Yeah. Stick Cat. There's two Stick Cat books. And um, also Thunder Drive. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
So um, Bass Reeves is a standalone, one of the two standalones, actually. But then kids can go on and, and read more about the characters, either in a group or, or on their own if they're interested. And another thing to do is to ask the kids for suggestions. Now then you can go back and double check, read the book yourself and make sure that what they're asking for is within the realm of what you want to present as a group read. Um, has anybody out there had any good um, tips or tricks or ways that you've gotten the kids or teens involved in your um, activities in your library? Type into the question section here and share your what you, maybe you have done. Or are you having a difficult situation with someone in particular? We had this question, particular question that came in. Um, if you've got something else that you're wondering about. Well, another tricky thing about having a book discussion group is that there is no one day or time that's going to work uh -huh. for all the people who are interested. So even people who are very interested aren't going to be able to come on Thursday afternoons or whatever time or day you set, and that's, that's a tough thing. And the kids are disappointed because they were excited about it and then whatever time or date worked for the most of them, there may be one or two that can't make it. And that's the same with every program that you plan. Well, if it's a come and be here program, there's going to be some who want to but can't make it. Um, what about, um, someone asked here, there's, um, I've, heard about online book clubs as and then mostly with adults has anybody done that kind of thing with the kids or teens would that be that's a good question I um, have not. so they can't necessarily be there to get the same time discussions can go on online somewhere or something that's a good suggestion that'd be worth trying if you have some kids who are into computers and you know the thing about being in person is that you get that camaraderie feeling, but you can also get that when I took classes for my MLS, we had like our, um, what are our programs we have for the librarian certification? Oh, the basic skills. Sorry. Um, no. Yeah. Okay. When you discuss online, you can get it. It's not the same, but it's still it's some still camaraderie. Discussion. Oh, there's a lot of discussion well, going on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That happened, and then you can try that, see if the kids Ask them, would you come, would you read the book and would you log into wherever you're going to house it? And you can do a mixture, I would assume, too, is, you know, have the in-person sessions, but for those that can't, they don't have to be left out. Say, also go over here in this little discussion group and go online and we'll have an email conversation back and forth about it or something. Yes, do that or and then tell me page. how it went because I want to share this with other people. <laughs> or you can come on and come us live and tell everybody. Yes, oh, tell us about it. Great. <laughs> I love that idea. All right, we're almost up to 11 o'clock here. Oh, great. Wow, yeah, that's my fast. <laughs> um, and if anybody has any last minute questions you want to ask or any ideas, tips, or suggestions you want to make, type it in. Um, anything that last thing you do need to, need to still mention? I think. I did everything. I just wanted to say again that so far we're planning on keeping all of these, this page up from the first one in 2007 up through as we add to it. The, the newest ones will be at the top of the page like this is. But um, we're planning on keeping the page there. At this point, from what I understand, we still have all of the book club kits set. There might be a time in the future when, because something's not being borrowed anymore, we decide to discard one. Um, and we'll make note of that on this page, and you'll have to round up books yourselves. Because I don't want to promise that these will be in the book club kits forever if interest has waned and other titles are more popular. It doesn't make sense. Just like books on your shelf, after a while, you just have to say goodbye. I know it'll be hard, especially if it's aliens on vacation, so everybody borrow aliens on vacation. <laughs> Just kidding. That's your book. Yeah. Um, I do have a question. Um, when, because we're, we're now, we're into September, so for 2017 right. we're getting towards the end. Yeah. When is the um, choice made for next year's books, or did you already selected those? Well, um, 
we kind of did a rush selection for 2018 because of our budget. We want to be sure we could purchase oh, the book club kits for both. So they have been chosen and purchased, and they will be announced early January. Now you've made me say it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Well, no, I was just curious about when, so, what time of year is it? Because, you know, we, there's all the, the one book for one Lincoln was just announced right. for the next year, this month, and, you know, there's the one book for Nebraska, then different times of year. So I was just wondering what the schedule was for how well, this yeah. one is chosen and then announced. I've been intentionally unclear about that. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> 2017 could be the start of the school year, but I really originally had planned it to be like the year, January, year. the calendar year, January to December, mm -hmm. though, like I said, you can use any book anytime and just say, mm -hmm. this is the one book for Nebraska teens for 2014. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. um, and then each year, there's these are new ones that we're highlighting as the one for this year. Right. And um, sometimes, like we did last year, we can get the author on um, to join us. That's yes. If they're yeah. if they're still alive, we always try. Um, you know, scheduling issues and whatnot. You never know though. If they'll be able to. Brandon Sanderson's on a, a tour. He is right now. Week. Yeah. We reached out, but he I noticed he is out and about traveling, so he's already so yeah booked for things at this time. And see this way, when we announce it in January and we get the pages and the ideas and the puzzles up and we contact the authors to let them know your book was chosen for this, then they have a whole year they could work plan in. Yeah. to work this in. So we're hoping that that will be an improvement mm -hmm. over people's availability. We'll see what happens in the next year. Okay. All right. I well, can remember the one book for Nebraska teens, but what was the kids? Should we, will should you say anything you, about them yet? Do you want to say anything? Yeah. It's up to you. Sorry, I don't know if that's okay. I don't remember what you want. <laughs> well, we can't remember unless we better not say that. Okay. We don't want to get one and not the yeah. other one. So. That'll be after me. If, it, yeah. if it's not out there early January, then I'll be in big trouble. But do you know that we did already, as I uh, said, the whole, um, if you're thinking about planning for it, we did already do the purchasing for our book club kits. So um, we will definitely have stuff available to um, be lent out to you when it um, does come up. So, and very soon I'm going to pull together a list of books to be considered for 2019. Sure. Mm -hmm. Just because we have 2018 decided mm -hmm. doesn't mean we're going to stop and put our feet up. No. Much as we may want to. Yeah. We're going to keep reading titles and so see people keep... on the committee. Mm -hmm will be getting a list from me of here's some suggestions. <coughs> and so there'll be lots of reading happening between now and I don't know what mid maybe summer of yeah. 2018. So again we yeah. can be ahead so you of have things. time to get things together, get all those games and whatever things created. Yeah. I, I like that. I have a lot of that done but it's what goes live in January. <laughs> Well, again, I'd love to hear from people for suggestions of other titles or puzzles or um, if you have questions that you didn't get a chance to ask now but came to you later, send me an email. Yeah. Awesome. It looks like we're about ready to hit 11 o'clock, so we're good timing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Amy and Sally, for being with us today to talk about this. Um, this is a, a real fun program. I've always liked this every year since the books have been in. Like I said, I read them too. Um, I'm pretty open to things I read. That's <laughs> um, good. So, um, and thank you everyone for attending. Um, I'll take back the announce. Oh, yeah. Well, let's see. So that will, um, oh, so just thank you for the great webinar. Um, that will wrap it up for this week's Encompass Live. Um, we are, it is being recorded, and you'll find that on our website. Um, also, if you go back to the Lottery Commission's webpage, same as anything we have here, under Education and Training is where we have a link to Encompass Live oh. webcasts. You can also type in here, if you want to do that for me, Sally, Encompass, and it will come up, Encompass Live. Um, but also, if you just Google, go ahead and type there too. And new live, yeah, space live, yeah. Enter. So far in the world, income slime is the only thing called that. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. you can Google us, use your search engine of choice, and become a yeah. Um 
So this is where you end up with it with um, whenever you look up our show. So this is our upcoming shows here. For, and I was going to show you right underneath them is the link to our archives, archived and Compass Live sessions. And this has our most recent ones come up first. And then this goes, as I said, all the way back to 2009 when we started. Let's see. I could scroll all the way down if I wanted to, but I won't. But it just makes goes all the way back. <laughs> um, we are also, this is a long list now, I understand. Um, we are working on a search feature for this. Um, Fern, Fern Bias, our, our, our IT guru here, um, he is working on that. So you'll be able to search for particular titles, um, topics on here. So hopefully that'll be coming soon. We'll have that in so a specific search. You know, we have this search, the entire commission, Nebraska Library Commission website, will be a search that's specific to just Encompass Live um, archives. Great. So hopefully that'll happen. So if this is last week's, we'll have a link to the recording. Um, we already have a link to the the, the um, set the page that'll be on here as well. Um, should be ready sometime this afternoon as long as YouTube cooperates with me and it's processing of the recording. Um, everyone who attended live and who registered will get an email automatically sent to you, letting you know the recording's ready, and then we'll blast it out on all of our um, mailing lists, social media, and everything, letting people know that it's up there for you to watch. So that will be for today's show. Um, I hope you join us next week when our topic is empowering immigrant community members through education and information. This is a very um, timely topic that I've got on the show here for next week. Uh, Mindy Rush Chipman is from Justice for Our Neighbors Nebraska, which is a, uh, an organization up in Omaha. And she actually did this session at a um, Three Rivers Library System. It is one of our regional library systems. You were mentioning Sharon at, from Central Plains earlier. And she had Mindy on during and um, attend one of their, um, I think it was a library strength training day. Oh, workshop data they have up there, um, talking about specifically resources and programming for the immigrants that are in your communities. Um, we have lots of people from all different countries come to Nebraska, which is really cool, I think. <laughs> and um, so she's going to come on the show. She's come down from Omaha to be here with us and talk about um, the resources and ideas they have there. So please do register for that and any of our other shows coming up. Um, the only thing to note here, you will notice one of these says no Encompass Live on October 11th. Uh, Encompass Live is every week except the one week of our Nebraska Library Association and our school, and Nebraska School Librarians Association annual conference. That's the week we take off because everybody pretty much is going there on that day. The conference is Thursday, Wednesday is pre-conference and Thursday, Friday is conference. So we will not be having our show then, but do, if you are wanting to attend, go ahead and register your registration. I think is open through September 23rd. Don't quote me on that. Click the link and find out. <laughs> but we do link to there so you can go um, check out that. Um, also, Encompass Live is on Facebook too. So, if you are a big Facebook user, give us a like over there. We post when our recordings are available, when new shows are coming up, and I do little reminders. You can log in on the fly to our show every week. So, um, if you are big on Facebook and want to be notified of what we're doing here on the show, give us a like over there. Other than that, that wraps up for this morning. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you guys. And we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.